Welcome to another episode of Comedy Wham! Presents The Past with me, your host, Valerie, and brought to you by David Thomas. ComedyWham.com is your place to go for features about all Austin comedy. David and I started this project earlier this year. I love interviewing funny people, and he loves writing about them. We'll be bringing you podcasts featuring the best in Austin comedy in all its shapes and formats. I'll be doing these interviews in two parts, the past and the current. Consider these bite-sized ways for you to get to know the folks that make the Austin comedy scene one of the best in the country. And now, the past with our guest, Vanessa Gonzalez. Yay. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Sure. You are a comedy wham celebrity. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Own it. Own yeah. It. Oh, okay. Yes, I am. <laughs> uh, the reason I say that for our, our listeners is you have been written about on the on comedywham.com a couple of times. Yeah. Um, uh, for two of my shows, uh, Dave, uh, has seen so uh he he like saw uh, both shows and was like oh I, oh I gotta I gotta write about you I want to uh-huh. promote it and you know yeah. all that stuff super sweet super supportive yeah yeah, yeah. he's Very great cool. yeah and then he you've been on his Ruka and Dave podcast yeah. and now this is the Comedy Wham presents yeah. podcast Very cool. <laughs> All right. Well, I feel like we've broken the ice, but I like to ask a standard icebreaker question. Mm -hmm. Pick one word to describe your past. Um, uh, comedy past or just open ended? Open ended. (laughs) Um, I would say, hmm. I don't know a lot of words, so this is hard. (laughs) I don't buy that. Um, I would say. It was, uh, like, I'm trying to think of the word of, I'm like, several words are coming to mind, like, kind of, uh, learning and growing and, yeah, um, definitely thrown in (laughs) to, (laughs) to things, but, yeah, I would say, just learning. 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 Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Laredo, Texas. Okay. Yeah. Border town. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I didn't do any like performing or anything like professionally. I was always just, uh, like class clown. I was ah. class clown in elementary school, middle school, and then high school. Like, you know, in the yearbook, they give you those, like, titles. Right. I got the yearbook titles. Um, and, yeah, it wasn't until maybe my senior year of high school where it was, like, a pep rally. I, this was my first performance. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a pep rally we did, and it was, like, Wizard of Oz themed, and I was the Wicked Witch, and I had to just, like, run in front of the whole school acting like the Wicked Witch. And I remember I was like so nervous uh-huh. and like, but I did it and I was riding a little razor scooter and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've covered about three or four of the questions that I planned to ask. Oh, really? so we're gonna, oh, no, we're going to dig into that. Yeah. So you, you were, uh, the anointed class clown. Mm-hmm. Is that just because that is, is it mostly because it's part of your personality at that time, or were you watching things, reading things that were oh, comedy yeah. related? Yeah, I think it was a lot of things for me. Um, my mom and my grandma were really loud and like the funny ones of like their friends, yeah. you know, and like the family. I remember people always talking about how funny my grandma was or how funny my mom is and, and I don't know. I just kind of like, got that from them like that loud mm-hmm. and like look at me type thing or yeah. or comment i think growing up in laredo is a lot of just making fun of other people <laughs> like <laughs> commenting like making funny comments about other people what they're wearing or uh-huh. you know or also like within the family like we made fun of each other all yeah. the time and that was very like instilled in me like as a child was like by both of my parents like you gotta laugh at yourself like we're gonna make fun of you we're gonna you should laugh at yourself as we're having a good time you know Mm -hmm. um it was that mixed with 
I, I used to watch, uh, Russell Simmons' Deaf Comedy Jam. Mm. I would watch, you know, Chris Rock specials, all his stand-up. Yeah. I would, uh, memorize, like, these stand-ups. But every time, like, HBO had, like, a stand-up comedy, like, yeah. special, I was like, oh, I would, like, write it down in a calendar and I had to make <laughs> sure I'm like, I'm, I would tell, like, my mom, like, I need to be home. I need to watch yeah. this, you know. And yeah, just all, all of them. I was just like, I want to just watch and see. And like, I remember watching like Howie Mandel and, uh, uh, Robin Williams specials and Mm -hmm. Kathy Griffin and just all types, you know? And I think those really like influenced me because I would, I would watch them over and over again. I would memorize them and I would try to like say, you know, jokes like them. And I'm like in, third or fourth grade you know really yeah just oh young gosh. and yeah and I, w- I wouldn't even understand most of the jokes like you know they're I very yeah, yeah. I got a fourth grader and yeah I, would, I don't think I could let him watch a Chris Rock special <laughs> right right <laughs> and that's the thing like I would you know especially with uh Russell Simmons deaf comedy jam I would like sneak out of my room everyone would be asleep and I, this is actually in my new show um I talk about like sneaking out and just watching that and mm-hmm. like listening to all like the curse words and, yeah. you know, and just being like, Oh, that looks so cool. Uh-huh. You know? <laughs> um, so yeah, just watching that. And then definitely I remember watching uh, John Leguizamo's oh, one man shows. Yeah. Those were just like, wow. Mm-hmm. Like I, he definitely influenced me in like when I started writing my solo shows. So I was mm-hmm. like, I want to do amazing. what he does. Yeah, yeah. He's so good. His character work. And also just like the, the way he tells a story, mm-hmm. you know, he's very honest and, 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 uh, gives all of these, like, you know, he makes it re- really funny, but then there's also these very like poignant parts mm-hmm. in his shows and, yeah, yeah, so good. If you, this is total sidebar t- yeah. thing, but if you, um, if you do, if anybody listening and you love John Leguizamo, he was just interviewed on a podcast called How to Be Amazing, <gasps> where mm. it's a little like this, where it's trying to get into the background and how did you get to be amazing, essentially. Mm. And that interview is amazing. Oh, it was amazing. Yeah. Oh, I <laughs> so want to listen to that. If you're a big that. fan of John Leguizamo, oh, go, gosh, go yeah. find it. Um, yeah, it's, it was a great interview. Yeah. You know, they always ask, like, you know, who would you be nervous like to meet or uh-huh. would you get starstruck by anybody? And I think I would yeah. freak out. <laughs> yeah. I did see him once at the Paramount. Oh, cool. His like latest one man show or not the latest. He has so many. Yeah. But his ghetto clown. Uh-huh. And I was just like, wow. <laughs> yeah. The whole time. Yeah. Well, a lot of people end up saying that their first comedic performance was when they had already moved to, when they had moved to Austin. Mm -hmm. Uh, so tell me about how you got, uh, roped in or volunteered for this, this, uh, pep rally. Your first, do you consider that? I mean, you you, you brought it up as your first performance. That was like my first performance. I didn't think when I was, you know, in high school and they asked me to do this, I knew that I did want to perform and I knew that I was like, man, I have, perform these stand up, you know, reperform, reenacted yeah. these stand up shows in my room, you know, and I performed for my friends and, you know, I, I liked making people laugh, but I had never really pictured like actually doing a show yeah. or doing. So I was terrified. I was like, yeah. all I had to do was just run around the, the gym in this razor scooter and act uh-huh. like the wicked witch and, and I was just so nervous. Um, and yeah, it felt like, I'm like, oh, this is like my big show, <laughs> you know, it's like 400 kids, uh-huh. you know, like, so yeah, I just remember being so, so nervous. And then it was over and I felt so like, wow, like I did that. And yeah. people were like, that was so great. You know, I didn't even say much. I was just yeah. acting really, uh-huh. you know, silly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like that was. Like first taste a bit, yeah <laughs> well it, and I tell like I tell my mom this and she's like well you know I also put you she would put us in like um costume contests and but we were like super young like mm-hmm. I was like 
an infant, like dressed as a bumblebee and stuff. And she's like, you were performing since you were little. I'm like, I don't remember that. <laughs> yeah. She's definitely a stage mom. Yeah. She is a stage oh. mom, I think. <laughs> yeah. She still to this day gives me like little, she's like, oh, I have, um, construction criticism. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, she's, uh, she's, super great and uh-huh. supports everything I do like does it I'm you know talk about my personal life and it gets pretty dirty sometimes mm-hmm. and she's just there with like bells on Aww. like yeah. <laughs> so she's a good stage mom yeah she's a Supportive. good stage mom she knows that that's where I get it from like you know her wild yeah. big personality Genetics. yeah <laughs> yeah so you go from that performance and mm-hmm. I guess we'll we'll Let's figure out now. How do you go from that performance to now being in Austin, and what has your path been? Because the the other thing is, and I know these these interviews sound a little bit like they focus on uh, the stand up comedy, and I know you do stand up comedy, Mm -hmm. but it's any kind of comedy, and your your thing, if I Mm -hmm. can put words in in your mouth, and you'll correct me, (laughs) is improv and then these one these these solo shows that you Mm -hmm. write and perform yeah how do you get from this this uh pep rally (laughs) to austin um well so i did the pep rally and then after that i did my first real play like also my senior year and that also i was like oh my gosh i'm doing it and it was like an an elective class like theater class it Mm -hmm. wasn't you know, it was like, that was our final exam to put up a play. So, uh-huh. you know, there was maybe like 10 people in the audience, but <laughs> that also gave me like more of a like, yeah, I can, this is really fun. I like this. Mm-hmm. And then I graduated and I had that, you know, I started doing my, you know, basic courses at community college there in Laredo and I was just freaking out. And I remember like, freaking out to my friends my family I'm like I have no idea what I want to do and I knew that I had to go to college because my parents were like you're going to college mm-hmm. you have to yeah. and I was like I don't want to <laughs> you know I don't want to go to college I don't know what I want to do I don't know what I like yeah and and it was just like really like bogging down on me and then I was like oh I know I want to be an actor and I was like well I don't need college to be an actor mm-hmm. I was like uh convinced that Johnny Depp and Julia Roberts had no training, no school, no nothing. I'm like, they just went and did it. Uh (laughs) So I was like, yeah. And I was telling my parents, I was like, yeah, I don't think I want to go to college. I think I want to move to LA and like be an actor. And they were like, no, Mm -hmm. (laughs) like, no, you're going to college. Like we worked our asses off and you're not going to mess this up for us. (laughs) You know, like that type of thing of like, you know, they came from very like, you know, uh, low income families and stuff. And they were just like, yeah, we want you guys to go to college and do that. And I was like, fine. If I'm going to college, the only thing I want to study is acting. Mm -hmm. So they were like, fine, we'll take it. Just that's the compromise. (laughs) Just go. So I researched and, um, the program at Texas state university really stood out. Like the, they have a great theater program and it had like, um, you know, all this, like, like, just great, like, things said about it. So I was like, okay, I'll go there. And I did. I, I went to Texas State and I, I was a theater major. And I remember my first, like, acting class. I was so excited. I was like, this is going to be awesome. I'm just like, this is what I want to do. And like, our first assignment was to perform a monologue. And I picked the John Leguizamo monologue because I had already knew. I'm like, I already know it. So I'm just (laughs) going to do that. And I remember performing it and the, my class was laughing and it was like having that class laugh was a little like validating of, I knew I was funny in Laredo. Mm -hmm. I knew my friends thought I was funny. But I'm like, I'm not funny outside of Laredo. There's no way I'm funny outside of Laredo. And then when I got, like, my first, like, feedback laughs in class and people were like, oh, you're funny. I'm like, well, okay. Uh Like, that's that's a thing. Uh Okay. 
And then I went through the whole program and I did, you know, some productions there and it was really fun and also hard. Like a lot, I, I learned that acting is not just going and doing it. <laughs> I had no idea. I was like, Oh, there's a lot uh-huh. that goes into it. Lots of training, lots of, um, like so much goes into like stage presence and, and commitment and character and all that stuff uh-huh. that I was just so like, Oh, this is so awesome. You know, uh, character work and analyzing things and stuff. So, so people aren't just born with it. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that there's a, I think it's a mixture. I think some people like have, yeah. you know, are born with it, but I think also it, it is like, I don't know, my, the, the training I got at Texas State, I think, really like um made me who I am today as a performer you know like when I get compliments and feedback like oh you're so funny and oh like you stood out and I think it has a lot to do with you know the the calculations and stuff that I'm like making in my head of Mm -hmm. of like oh I think this is a really like good like it's almost like um music to me you know it's like you you see the script and it's like this is a good point to like give it a little more energy here and like take it back yeah. and stuff like that and that's that's what I learned in college um so yeah and and I went through that and and then I was going to graduate and then I was freaking out again I was like well I'm not uh I'm not Julia Roberts or Johnny Depp so I don't know what to do and then I just I knew I I wanted to do comedy like I you know, did a lot of acting in college and they did comedy and drama and all types of theater. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yeah, just comedy feels right to me. It feels natural. Right. So I knew I wanted to, I knew there was like a scene in Austin. I didn't know much about it, but I just got online and I was like, okay, comedy in Austin, like just Googled. And then I didn't like find much. It was like stand up. And at the time I was like, no, that freaks me out. I'm not going to do stand up. No way. And then I Googled like, uh, like Latino, like actors or, you know, just things to like, um, that focus more on like Latino actors and like opportunities and stuff. Mm -hmm. And this, uh, website came up called the Latino comedy project. And I was like, Oh, Okay, and I didn't know anything about them, and I saw they had a show coming up, so I was like, okay, I'll go to that show. And I went to the show, I was packed. It was at, um, where, it was at Salvage Vanguard Theater, and it was packed out in their main stage, and they were doing these sketches, they're so funny, and all geared towards, like, um, like, Latinos, and like, growing up Latino, and like, also like, political things and like things going on now and Mm -hmm. and just like it it was just so fun and I could see like the audience was full of these like Latino people and they're relating and they just like loving it and it was just like so cool and then so I emailed the guy I didn't know how at the time sketch groups worked I didn't know that you know most sketch groups are like you know friends coming together Mm -hmm. they create their own groups um, I thought you auditioned, like, I thought you, I thought it was like any production, like, yeah. uh, play or something. So I emailed the guy and I said, Hey, are you guys having auditions? And he was like, Yeah, well, sometimes we do that, but we don't really do that. And I was like, Oh, well, I think I would be a really good, like, part of this. Yeah. I, I'm from Laredo and like, I totally get it. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm like funny too. So, <laughs> Uh, and he's like, oh, okay, well, I, he's like, I'll, I'll see you, like, if you want to come and audition, sure, why not? Like, I think it, he told me, I think it took a lot of balls to, like, email us and say, like, yeah, yeah I should be in this, you know? Uh-huh. So I did that, and he said, okay, well, you better be funny. <laughs> and I was like, okay, <laughs> like, no pressure. Uh-huh. <laughs> and so I wrote my first, like, monologue, and I didn't really know what I was doing and I was nervous and I was like I've never written anything before you know and so that wasn't an element of your schooling no not writing no yeah it was just all based it was uh 
theater production and performance. So we just learned about performing and like character work and like in terms of like doing research and Uh stuff for like a specific character and, and production stuff, but no writing had I done. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. So I was like, I don't know what to do, but I, I saw their show and I got a sense of what they do. So I was like, okay, well, I'll write what I know. And I know my mom and she's crazy and like a stage (laughs) mom and like, you know, like look at me and my, my mom is very like, uh, she loves like punky stuff. She likes to dress younger than she Uh is and she's like very outspoken. So I was like, okay, I'll just, I'll be her, Uh you know, I'll stand up terrifies me, but if I'm in this character, I can do that. So I borrowed one of my mom's outfits. It was like a skull, skull shirt, a leather skirt, like chunky heels and like put my hair up and like glasses and just look like her. And I went and I did this monologue for the group yeah. and they were just like laughing. They were just laughing throughout and I was nervous. I was mm-hmm. like speeding through it. I was like, yeah, you know, and the monologue was just, um, my mom talking about, my mom's been married to my dad for like 40 years now, but she always talks about dating other men. I don't know. <laughs> That's her thing. She's like, well, you know, when your dad dies, I'm going to oh. find a white dude and, you know, stuff <laughs> like that. So it was pretty much just her, like real things she yeah. said. And they just like loved it. And they're like, yeah, we want you in the group. Nice. So um I started in the group and they're like, yeah, we want to put that monologue in our first, sh- our, our next show. And then that was terrifying, terrifying. My, my first show with Latino comedy project was at the hideout. And it was, uh, it was when Bush was, uh, his term was ending. So they, they did a bye bye Bush theme show. Uh And I, I, I did my, my monologue and it killed, like (laughs) brought the house down. And I was just like, this is crazy, you know, and I was so nervous and my mom went, my dad yeah. went, my brothers, and they all thought it was like hilarious. And, and then that was like another like validation of like, okay, I was funny in Laredo. I was funny in San Marcos. Okay. And I, I got, I'm funny in Austin, I guess. Yeah. That's weird, you know? So it's then like another like, okay, I guess I am really yeah. funny, not just to my friends. And, and yeah, so then I was in Latino Comedy Project. I started in sketch comedy, uh, for about four years. We did shows around town and we traveled. We did a show in LA. And after the four years, I, um, I had a friend in the group who did improv. And he was like, oh, you guys should do improv. And I'm like, that sounds scary. <laughs> Just making it up. What? That's, that's crazy. And I had taken an improv class in college. It was like part of the program. Yeah. Um, and I was like, well, I guess that was kind of fun. And then, um, so he's like, yeah, I teach classes at the new movement. You should come check it out. And then that's when I met, uh, Chris True and Tammy Nelson, who run the new movement. Mm-hmm. And I went and took classes there. And I just fell deep in love with improv. Like, I was like, this is so cool because I loved Latino Comedy Project and performing. But I was, there was something that was kind of restricting of like just playing Latino characters. Mm -hmm. And like also when I go to auditions, it's like just the mom or the maid or, you know, just typical roles. So then I... I was like thrown into this improv world where they're like, yeah, you could be whatever you want. I was like, what? (laughs) They're like, yeah, you could be a man. You could be a cat. You could be whatever. And I just thought that was so awesome. Uh Like that, that's what like made me just love it. Like I could play anything and just like by committing to character or whatever. So that was really cool. And then, so after Latino comedy project got into improv and I've been doing improv for like eight years now. Yeah. And yeah. And then so took classes and Chris True was very much like a big, like, uh, like he's, he saw me and was like, you're so, you're super funny. And 
you should like start groups and like the new movement was like very much like the place where I knew I can do shows on my own. Yeah. You know, it was like he he very much pushed like Vanessa should do like her own shows and like do more like and all that. And yeah. even when I didn't believe that I could, he definitely like confirmed for me and like was like, no, you should, you uh-huh. should. And he pushed me along that path. And uh in the improv world, improv groups don't really last that long. It's like six months or a year, you mm-hmm. know, and you know, people get busy. It's sure. hard to schedule. So I was getting kind of down. I'm like, man, all my, my improv groups aren't sticking. People are moving away. People are going to LA, New York, mm-hmm. Chicago. And I'm like, should I go? You know, like, should I do that? Mm-hmm. I don't, I wanted to. That was my initial plan to go to LA, you know, after high school. But now after seeing what Austin had and, and like just growing up, I'm like, I don't think I would be happy there. Mm-hmm. Like it just didn't feel right for me. And then Chris Shrew was like, well, you need to do, like, a one-woman show. Like, just do your own show. And I was like, yeah, right. Like, that's (laughs) terrifying. And he's like, no, yeah, you should do that. And um, so then I was like, I finally just got the confidence. And I was like, okay, let's do it. And he's like, all right, here's your date. And gave me maybe about four months. And he's like, here's your date. It's at a festival, uh-huh. Hell Yes Fest. You're, that's when you're going to debut your show. So I was like, okay, well, I have to do it. Uh-huh. There's no like, yeah, I'll do it when I'm ready. Uh-huh. It was like he set a date. He's he's booked me. And then I just had to write my first show, yeah, <laughs> which was terrifying. <laughs> and like, yeah, crazy. It's so funny. Yeah. So one of one of my last questions that I ask as we're, we wrap up the, um, mm-hmm. the past is, is there anything you're afraid of? And before I let you answer, mm-hmm. I'm hearing you talk about these instances that you're being put in, you know, the pep rally, mm-hmm. the, well, you're not happy at the school, but hey, I'll, I'd much rather go to school if I could do acting. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I'll do that. Okay, well, I'm just going to see if they might audition for the the Latino project. Okay, I'll do that. It yeah. scares me, but I'll do it. And then now here we are with Chris Drew telling you, okay, you're booked for this date. Write a solo show. And yeah. you're terrified, but you're doing all of this. Mm-hmm. So now, Vanessa, tell me, is there anything that scares you? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, yeah. It's, it's funny because I think along the way – like, as I tell it, it does sound like, yeah, it was just like point A to uh-huh. point B, you know, but there was so much like dips and like, you know, crying sessions. I'm like, I don't know what the hell's going on. Yeah. I don't think I could do this, you know? And I, th- and I knew I was good as I kept, as I kept performing in front of people, I would get good feedback. Yeah. And, and I'm like, I know what I can do. I know that this is natural to me. I know that I like this, but I was like, it's, it was almost like I was afraid of being too good or afraid of success, you mm-hmm. know? And I was like, yeah, like, I don't, I think that's what scared me the most about a solo show. I was like, ah, that's, who does a solo? <laughs> like, who's that full of themselves, you know? I'm like, it sounds so, like, embarrassing. You're a hero. Yeah. John, like, what's up? <laughs> I <does>. know. <laughs> exactly. And then I was just like, I, I know I can do it. Mm-hmm. But it was, I was like, what are people going to think? What if, I don't know, what if it's bad? You know, I've, I've gotten good feedback so far. And then what if this sucks? You know, so I was afraid of that, like during this like process that all of everything I talked about was within the past eight or nine years, uh-huh. you know? So yeah, I, I think even now I'm afraid of like, I, I think I'm just, I'm afraid of like, okay, well, what's next? Like, how do I keep mm. up? Like, mm-hmm. how, how do I go to the next level? And like, yeah. I know that I have this passion, but I'm like, how, how do I like keep it up? You know, yeah. cause it's like money and time. And, and then sometimes I'm like, I don't think that I can break into like anything bigger because of like, 
the way Hollywood works and like looks and all that stuff. Like I get all in my head about that and I'm just like, yeah, it's hard. Like I think I'm, a, I, uh, I think I know what I'm capable of, but I'm afraid that I'm holding myself back, you know? Mm hmm. And that's why I need, like, it's crazy that people come along and are like, no, you do got this. Yeah, do, do that. that. Yeah. <laughs> they see yeah. something in you that you're not always aware of that, that is there. Yeah. And I think, like, I doubt myself sometimes. Mm -hmm. And, but then once I do it, I'm like, oh, I did it. Yeah. Okay. And you get great feedback. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Well, we are going to, uh, we're going to wrap it up and okay. the, the big tease for the, the next episode is you, you going from the one, one woman show mm -hmm. to multiple solo shows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is a wrap on Comedy Wham presents the past with our guest, Vanessa Gonzalez. Tell us where we can find you, Vanessa, on social media or the web. Yeah. Um, I have a website, vanessacomedy.com and on Twitter, I'm at Vanessa, B-U-H-N-E-S-S-A. And you can see me every Tuesday at 8 at the New Movement with This is Handbomb. Very good. Yeah. Listen to part two for more information about what Vanessa is up to today. You've been listening to Comedy Wham Presents, the past hosted by me, Valerie, and brought to you by David Thomas. Be sure to visit ComedyWham.com and give us a follow on Twitter at ComedyWham. I'm Valerie, and that's been funny. <laughs>